get up before, well before dark, you'd be, uh, drive out to the pasture. We had a one-ton truck we'd haul our horses out in. Stock trailers were unknown. Horse trailers were just a few of them used by rodeo cowboys. People used pickups or uh, stock trucks to haul their horses. And we'd get out there while it's still dark. It's, you'd be in the pasture when you couldn't really see well enough to round up cattle. You'd have to sit there a little while until it was light enough that you could round up the cattle. You'd cut out the ones you wanted, you'd head them to Cassidy or Matfield, Aikman, Bazaar. The others would be counted back into the pasture. Remember, the pasture man is has responsible for the count. If he gets a thousand cattle in the spring, he better ship a thousand cattle or have the the brands cut off the ones that died, or point out the fresh um, skeletons of the ones that died. Anyway. Start him into town, count the others back in the pasture. And we'd, uh, this one guy we worked for a lot out east of Cassidy, it was anywhere from a 12 to 15 mile drive, depending on which pasture you were uh, shipping that day, and you'd start in. And you'd get to the pens, usually around noon, maybe a little bit after, put your cattle in, weigh them right away, and then put them in a pen. If you were the first ones there that day, you got the pen closest to the loading uh, chutes. If you're the second, you got the second most closest and so on, stuff like that. And then uh, <clears throat> uh, you'd uh, go to Opal's Cafe, get something to eat. You'd hear the train whistle. You'd hop on your horse, look back up to the cattle pens and start loading the cattle. Now, the thing is, the railroad stock car is about that far away from the loading dock. The loading dock's about this high, heavy timber, and it's, but you got this gap, the doors on the stock car are about four feet wide, and you got this big old thing we call a bull board, probably weighed a couple hundred pounds, got a couple of rings on each side, and you have to pick that up and drop it into that slot between the car and the loading dock so the cattle don't, you know, fall in there and break a leg getting in. So you'd run them in the car, and then you'd, uh, there's a board that would fit across, you'd put that across, jerk that, uh, pull the gates back, jerk that bull board out, slide the door shut, fasten it, and signal the engineer to pull on up. At Cassidy, we could load two cars at a time. I might have at Bazaar, only one here at Matfield and Aikman, as I recall. And then he'd pull up, and he'd load the next two, and then pull up, and he'd load the next two. Everybody had stayed to help, everybody else load. That was the protocol there. Anyway, there's this, um, one of the stories they tell about the Cassidy yards is about this guy who lived out east of town on the Henley Ranch, which is about 12 miles from town, he'd help somebody out there even farther east than that ship cattle that day. And back in those days, this is in the 1930s, no, uh, he didn't have a truck. And if he had, he wouldn't have had it at the stockyards. When they were sh through shipping, he had to ride back home. He had gotten up probably about 3, 3.30 that morning, got out the pasture, helped round up the cattle, helped cut, drove them in, helped load them. And I was going to help load them, but the train was late. They were having some kind of trouble, and it wasn't there. I usually got in about 4 o'clock, 3, 4, 5 o'clock. It wasn't there. 6 o'clock comes, it's not there. They send somebody down the depot. What's the holdup? Well, the train's had a hot box or something. I don't know what it was. He's going to be late. He didn't get to the Cassie Stockyards till about 10 o'clock at night. There's no daylight savings time. It's dark, but there's electric lights. And this guy has got, they're about the last ones to load cattle. He's helping everybody else load, of course. And the uh, train would pull up and stop, and then they'd get the bull board, and they had two big heavy gates that swung around from the loading chute. The loading chute goes up like that, and to form a, a solid chute into the car, and if the the train is, is working right, it's gonna stop right in, the brakeman's gonna signal, the engineer's gonna stop right in front of the chute. You just swing those gates around, drop in the bull board, run the cattle in, pull it out, shut the gate, and go on in two more and a little, it's pretty quick. But this guy, this engineer, was first three feet this far, and then he was two feet back this far, and then he was four feet that far. Every time, he never stopped right where 
the, the, the gate where the car door was. He was always one way or the other. He'd have to back up too far and then back up again. And this one guy, the guy that, had, that lived out on the Henley and had to ride his horse home 12 miles and get up the next morning at 3.30 to do the same thing. It's now probably 11, 11.30 at night. And this guy had a kind of a temper anyway and he got a little bit irritated. He says to the brakeman, what in the hell's wrong with that engineer? Doesn't he know how to drive this train? And the brakeman just kind of shrugged. I mean, he's not very happy either. He'd rather be home in bed, but no, he's out there having to do that. And they still have to stop at Matfield and Bazaar on their way to Kansas City. He just kind of shrugs and the cowboy says to him, maybe it's you. Maybe you don't know how to signal that lantern right. And the brakeman says, well, if you think you can do it better, why don't you just do it? And the cowboy says, you smart aleck son of a bitch, somebody ought to teach you some manners. And the brakeman says, come on. And the cowboy lunges at him and the brakeman hits him right inside the head with a lantern. Knocks him down, jumps on him and starts pounding. Cowboy never landed a blow. The other cowboys come running up to see what's happening. And the cowboy on the floor getting pounded, yells up at his friend and says, get me away from this guy before I hurt him. And the, the fight's over. And after that, every time the train stopped, the brakeman would say, how's that? And the cowboy would say, close enough. And they got, the, got him loaded. Okay, well, that's a little story about things that happened. What's your schedule like? Anybody got any questions?